welcome. I'm going to, I'm going to kick us off officially and then I'll turn it over to Prana. We're going to trade back and forth. Um, but uh, I just want to introduce myself. I'm Dan. Uh, I'm the VP of product here at Meetup. Um, I will, Prana will introduce herself in a second. Don't worry. I wanted to go over a couple of the logistical things and then we can get into the, the fun content. Um, we can't see you. That's one of the sad things about doing a webinar. That also means I can't hear you. I wanted you to know both those things, but we know you're there. Um, if you have questions, you can submit them in the Q&A window. The chat we're using to just chat uh, and say hi um, isn't as easy to answer and make sure we're hitting all the questions. So please put questions while you're speaking, while we're speaking and presenting, feel free to drop questions in there. We'll try to get to as many as we can. Um, and then we have closed captioning available. So at the bottom, you can click on the live transcription icon and you'll see the robot writing down what we said. Uh, outline of the event. So the event is this right now, introduction. Uh, we have about 20 something minutes to tell you what's going on. I should have said Q3 updates. How'd I miss that? Sorry, folks. Uh, updates and then looking ahead and then a Q&A session. So we're gonna get started right away. And for the first part, I'm gonna turn over to Perna. Cool. Thanks, Dan. Um, hi, everybody. I'm Prerna. I'm a senior director of product here at Meetup. I'm on Dan's team and I'm excited to be here all to talk to you about uh, what we've been up to for uh, Q3 and, and what we're kind of working on in Q4. Um, if you've joined us for any of the past few Meetup Lives that we've done on our product roadmap, uh, this should be a very familiar slide. Um, but for those of you who are new, I want to recap what our ambitions are for 2021. First, um, we've been really focused on improving the way that people find and attend online events um, and making it really easy to join any event happening globally. Second, um, our 2021, uh, one of our 2021 priorities was to help our members find events and groups um, and really stepping up our own game and actually telling folks about them proactively. And third was improving the tools that we're giving our organizers so that they can do what they need to do um, successfully on our platform. So today's agenda will follow a pretty similar format to last quarter's updates. We're going to cover uh, what already shipped in Q3, which I'm about to share with you all. Um, we're gonna talk a little bit about what we're working on and what you can expect to see from us as we close out the, uh, the end of the year. Um, Dan will take you through that. And then lastly, um, as Dan already mentioned, we're going to take some time at the end uh, to answer your questions. So without further ado, um, I'd love to kind of transition into talking about Q3 updates. Uh, today, uh, we'll be, I'm not going to share everything that we shipped in Q3. That would be a much, much longer meeting. Um, but I want to highlight a few of the big projects that we've shipped in the last few months, broken down by what's shipped on web, uh, what's gone out for our pro organizers, and lastly, um, updates from our mobile apps team. Um, also, at the end of the section, I do want to spend a little bit of time talking about some major bug fixes that also went out this past quarter. Okay, so first up, uh, a project that you have heard Dan and I talk extensively about um, is our new logged in homepage. Uh, for those of you who have been longtime organizers, this is a marked difference from the look and feel of our old logged in home. Uh, since releasing this homepage widely across, uh, across the globe to all of our members and organizers, we've gotten some really great feedback from so many of you on how we can continue to make this page better um, so that it serves your needs, specifically showcasing more events from groups that you're already a part of and streamlining the navigation. We're actively working on improving this experience and engaging actually many of you in our design process um, so that this logged in homepage continues uh, to help you do the job that you've come to meet up for and do it really well. Next up, uh, when we released logged in home, we also released a related experience that allows you to view all events that you're already going to that you have told us you're interested in and anything else coming from groups that you're already a part of. Uh, that page is this page right here that you see on your screen called Your Events. In the process of collecting uh, feedback on that logged in homepage, we also got a lot of awesome feedback uh, from so many of you again on how to improve this experience. 
and we've shipped a number of improvements over the course of the last few weeks to continue to make this more functional. You can see this kind of um, uh, kind of marked by all the, the purple commentary there. Um, I also want to take this time to mention that we're hosting an event next week called uh, Getting the Most Out of Meetup. Uh, this event is going to be a demonstration on how to best leverage this new login experience, search, and other features. Um, it's going to be hosted by our amazing customer experience team. If you have any questions on how to do certain things on Meetup, um, including how to use or navigate this experience, this event's going to be an amazing and excellent opportunity to get that clarity and have your questions be answered. So if you're interested in attending, we'll drop a link in the chat. Um, and you can find more details uh, on our Meetup Live event page. Next up, um, in response to customer feedback, we shipped a feature that allows you to explicitly change your time zone. We know that sometimes people move or they're traveling and they want to see event times displayed in a different time zone. Um, but before this feature went out, it was really hard to tell Meetup explicitly which time zone you wanted, wanted to see your events in. So we've made this easier. You can modify your time zone from your profile page. Um, and this effort is actually part of a, a larger effort that we've been um, doing to help improve how we display time zones across our site, which I will talk about in just a few more slides. Uh, next up, uh, we added an option to use Google Pay on um, subscription checkout as a express checkout option. So if you have Google Pay set up on your Chrome browser, you'll see the GPay button appear under express payment options. Uh, this should make it really easy, especially when you're on your phone, uh, to pay for or renew your Meetup subscription. Um, I know I use GPay a lot, uh, especially when I'm checking out on an e-com website. Um, so you should, um, it should be a lot easier to do so uh, to check out on Meetup as well. Uh, we're also working on bringing you the same functionality as an Apple Pay integration on both Safari and Chrome. So more to come here, but excited to get this out uh, for all of you. Um, next up, I want to talk about autocomplete in search. Uh, we previewed this last time as something we were working on, uh, but hot off the press, this feature was just released earlier this week to a small percentage of users. Um, we released autocomplete on our search, um, and it should make it easier for members to find things that they love on Meetup, um, especially when you're on your phone. We all know typing is hard. Um, a little fat finger problem. So if you're looking for a hiking group, um, you can just start typing in HIK and click on any of the results that will appear right below with just a few keystrokes. Um, expect this, to see this feature be rolled out more widely in the coming weeks. Um, next up, uh, the last thing I will, I'll say about our web uh, releases is um, I wanna talk a little bit about topics. Topics and interests play a huge role at Meetup. They are the primary forces that allow us to match members to organizers um, and show relevant events in groups. Over the course of this past year, we've spent a lot of time cleaning up and refreshing our topics database, making sure that the topics are relevant because let's face it, a lot has changed in the world uh, since the last time we looked at this and that they're extremely clear in their meaning and intent. In the last month, what we've done is we've updated all of the places in our product um, to now leverage this updated set of topics. Furthermore, we're rolling out starting this week, event level topics. Um, now you can use topics to specifically describe what your event is about, which should improve event discovery for members. So I'm um, excited to get your feedback here, um, and we're going to continue to improve and iterate on this experience so that uh, we can continue to deliver the value um, that Meet Meetup um, uh, brings to you all. Um, one release note from, uh, from our pro team. So for our pro customers, we released a feature uh, that now allows you to set sponsors at the network level. This means that network sponsors will now be shown on every group in that network, in addition to any regular group sponsors. Network sponsors appear on all group and event pages within their network and across platforms on both web and apps. 
we think this will be a really great way for any pro network sponsors uh, to be featured across all the groups in their network. Um, from the mobile apps team, I, I just wanted to highlight a couple uh, sort of big uh, sort of uh, fixes we've we've been working on and we we worked on and shipped this past quarter. Um, we know from a lot of reports we had login issues that were reported specifically on the iOS app. Um, we believe we have a fix for this uh, released in the latest version, so you we should be seeing a lot less uh, issues uh, on the iOS app as in terms of uh, members and organizers logging in. We also made a lot of improvements under the hood to our event homepages on both mobile app platforms. Um, and the specific goal there was to make it a lot more performant. We've also made some small design changes to optimize um, the most important information on the page. We're going in Q4, we're gonna continue to make tweaks to the event homepage um, to ensure that members uh, can find the information they're looking for in order to RSVP to an event. Um, I'm almost there. A uh, few more things I wanna cover on uh, in terms of bug fixes. Um, we spent some time in Q3 fo focusing on how to fix the time zone, um, some time zone issues that I referred to previously. Um, we made two fixes on how time is displayed on our site to make it easier for guests and members to show up on time every time. The first change we made is um, we are we have now made time zones um, a displayed in a more readable and familiar for, uh, format. So rather than uh, GMT plus five, which is what it used to be, uh, it now shows uh, CEST, so Central European Standard Time. Um, this should be a whole lot clearer and. Uh, I know I wasn't great at math and time zone, so hopefully this should make uh, make it a lot easier for folks to understand if they're um, when if they are available and what time they should be attending the event. Um, uh, the second change we made is on event pages. Uh, we are now displaying online events uh, in the guest and members system time instead of the group's local time. We know that online events. Um, it are less dependent on where the group is actually at and more dependent on where uh, the member is physically located. So we're using system time instead of the group's local time, again, to improve our communication on, uh, on time. And the last update I wanna share is uh, on web specifically, I, I talked about mobile apps and, and our login issues. Um, we also know on web, our login process hasn't always been seamless or reliable. Uh, we made a lot of changes here also under the hood to ensure that members and organizers can reliably log into Meetup and use all of our features. Um, and now I'm gonna pass it off to Dan to talk about what's ahead, of, uh, ahead for us um, as we look to close out the year. Thanks, Brennan. Um, so just to the reminder, this, these are the three um, areas that we had said we were uh, for all 2021 when we were focusing on product improvements, um, which is improving online events, finding events and groups just for you and providing organizers with the tools they need. So all of this stuff still falls into these buckets. We haven't shifted what we're focused on, but I wanna talk about the things specifically that we've been working on uh, and that we have coming up in the next few months. So at the beginning of the pandemic, um, put a pause on seeing other people largely in person. So we turned to online events to connect with these folks and it was a great change of pace, uh, but it's not the same as in-person connection uh, that many of us, including me, that I go to meet up for. So now that we have vaccines and we know more about how to stop the spread of COVID, I think we have the ability in certain places and at certain times, obviously to meet in person safely and Meetup wants to make it easier to do that. So we've created a simple way to let members know what to expect at all of our events. So we can let them know if masks are required, if vaccinations are required, and whether the event is inside or outside. Um, and organizers can own the description of that to clarify it. So they can write a little note to let people know. I wrote an example here of like, I had an event this week where it was actually outside, so masks weren't required for most of the event, but we had to be in a building for part of it, masks were required then. Um, this actually just launched. Um, so I guess it should have been in Perna section, but I think it launched hours ago. Um, the reason it's still here though for Q4 is we're gonna continue working on this set of features. Right now, for example, this information is just on the event page. So we'll make this event, this information easier to find um, and easier to find groups and events by it. 
We're planning on giving organizers the ability to ask members about their vaccination status when they RSVP. That's a request we've gotten a lot of. If you have more ideas for how we can help you get back to meeting in person, please let us know. Um, meeting in person is a huge part of what Meetup is, and we want to have that continue, but we want to make it as safe and as easy as possible. So this is the first and what I hope will be many improvements there. So we've mentioned this before, but it bears mentioning more than once. We are creating a separate app to help organizers use Meetup for what they do the most. Um, it's in development now. The beta is going to start in the next month or so. So we're looking for organizers to help us test it. Um, but I think the best way to talk about what's been going on is to just show you some of the work that we've done. Um, I don't want to speak to it because it's not exactly my work. So Caitlin on our team created a video uh, to share with you what the team has been up to. So I'm going to play it now and hopefully it will help with volume. And let me see if I can. Hi, I'm Caitlin and I'm the product designer on the organizer app here at Meetup. I'm really excited to show you guys the progress that we've made in creating an app that allows you to host events successfully in your community. For our initial release, we're going to focus specifically on event creation, allowing you to edit, track, and even create events while on the go. Everything is gonna be based off of this screen here. This is your group info screen. It's going to include your profile, your group info, upcoming, past, and even draft events, and down here at the bottom, a uh, blog here for helpful hosting tips. When you tap on an event, you're going to see a screen that actually looks pretty different from the event screen on the current Meetup app or on the website. This screen is optimized to be a quick glimpse of event details that you need to know as an organizer, including how many people are going and hosting, the primary details that your guests are seeing, and optional settings you may toggle on or off. The most helpful tool here is going to be this Manage Event button. Everything you need will be located right under here. Let's say for this event you've had a couple of requests to allow guests to attend this book club meeting. Well, this event doesn't currently allow for guests. All you need to do is tap Manage Event and edit the event. Scroll down to Allow Guests, toggle that on, and save. And voila, you can now allow guests to your event. One thing we're really excited about is this create event button right here. When you tap that, you get two options. You can both create an event from scratch or you can copy an event from past events or templates. Watch how quickly I can create a brand new event. I know that the September book club meeting was really successful, so I just want to copy it. I have all the information already loaded. The only thing that can't happen is the date. September 1st is in the past. So we simply need to select a new date and publish, and it's that easy. We are super excited to be showing this to you guys, and we can't wait to iterate further and make sure that you guys have every single tool you're going to need as an organizer to host these successful, awesome events. Thanks for listening. Hi, I'm Caitlin, Hi. and I'm the product designer. It's hard to avoid a second loop. I apologize. Um, Caitlin is one of the amazing folks on our team. Uh, that's a prototype. A few things have changed while we built it, but fundamentally, that's where we're going first. Um, I hope for organizers um, on here, that's, that's a useful preview of what we're going towards next. Um, I think for everybody who's not an organizer, it's also good to get a sense of what's going on on the other side of that curtain. Um, it takes a lot more work than that to create an event, but the app makes it really easy to do it uh, on Meetup. Hi, I'm Caitlin, Oops. and I'm the See? product designer on the organizer Hold app on. here I'm at sorry. Meetup. This happened before too. Getting to the next slide is just trickier on that. Um, this right here, this is one of the most requested features at Meetup. Actually, someone already posted in the Q&A a related thing. It's taken us a while to get here, but this is on our Q4 roadmap. Um, and this is an example of what this might look like. In short, we want to give organizers more control about how their events show up. One of the first steps there is enabling rich text in the event descriptions. Actually. There are additional steps here, one of which is adding video and other multimedia elements to it. Um, I think Carl might have asked it, but uh, I, I yes, that is that is getting there too. That's on the roadmap. It's not in Q4 right now. Um, so it is a yes and soon. Product teams have heard you loud and clear. Um, but this is this is us starting to make it easier to represent what's going on at the event. And this helps for us who are looking for events. It is really great for me to see an agenda. It gives me a really clear picture of whether this is an hour of like open mingling with people or structured networking time. So uh, I am very excited for this. And like I said, this is the first of what I hope to be a large series of making uh, event pages and group pages better and easier for organizers and members. 
This feature, group stats, this has been a part of Meetup for a very long time, but we've had a bug actually that's prevented some of this from working for an embarrassingly long amount of time. And as an organizer, it was actually hard for me to read and know how to use this. So on the one part, I'm really excited to have it fixed. I'm really excited for the visual overhaul that makes it easier to read. But what's even more exciting for me that I wanna point out is this is gonna end up on our new platform, um, which makes it easier to take your feedback and quickly turn that into actions to improve upon these features. So as running a group, it's incredibly valuable to understand what's happening every day with my members and how my group is doing and how it's growing. And so I'm really hoping to hear from organizers as they see this new version of it in Q4, what else we can do to make this better for you. So one exciting thing that I think is a great, a great start to another uh, you know, long series of changes. And then this last one, this is one of my favorites as an organizer. I've hosted online events um, and I spend a lot of time on the internet clicking things. So at least half of the events on Meetup are using Zoom. So for all the people like me who are using Zoom to host, we wanna make it easier. The details are still being worked out for exactly how this works. What I have here is uh, my, my quick visual demo of it. But basically I wanna make it easy for, as an organizer for me, for all of you to just click a button. I already have a Zoom account and without leaving Meetup, just have the URL automatically into the event. Um, being an organizer is a really tough job. It takes a lot of work and time. Anytime we can make that easier by making the tool better and have Meetup take some of that load on, we want to. And this is one of those features that I hope will make organizing just a little bit easier and take some of the, the detailed work out of it. Before we get into Q&A, let me get to answer some of the questions. Thank you everybody for putting them in there. Um, last time we chatted, which is a few months ago in this event, we were starting to see a recovery from the pandemic in the US. And I was really hoping that that trend was going to continue in the US and I was seeing the rest of the world as vaccines became available start down the same, you know, up the same wonderful curve of recovery. But the Delta variant changed that landscape. And while again, I'm at a moment of optimism for the US for much of Europe and more of the world, the world has changed. And we're not under the illusion that I think as we originally hoped when this started, it will end and we'll go back to the old normal. So in the months ahead, we wanna make sure we've adapted the experience so you can continue to get the most out of Meetup so we all can. We'll continue to work on ways to get groups to find safe paths towards meeting in person. And as we've said, we're committed to having online events be a part of Meetup in the long run. Hopefully it becomes a great way to supplement our in-person experiences and continue to expand our reach and see old friends. But if we need to retreat inside for some reason, we wanna make sure that Meetup is there to help for that too. So I just wanted to pause and say a lot has changed and continues to, and Meetup's goal is to be here, continuing to help people make real connections. And I'm incredibly hopeful that that is largely in person again, but when it is not, I wanna to continue to try to make that easier and better for everybody. Okay. Um, thanks, Dan. Uh, Dan just talked a lot about what we've been, uh, some of our big focuses in, in Q4. Um, another area that we are spending time in Q4 is focusing on providing all of you uh, better ways of updating, uh, updating you all on our progress, uh, especially as features are released. Um, these are obviously great opportunities and we do them uh, do these quarterly, but uh, I think there's a, a, a more enriching opportunity for all of us to engage in dialogue and conversation by um, sharing with you release notes as, as things are getting released. So we're gonna spend more time uh, in Q4 figuring out the best format um, and eager to get all of your feedback on, um, on what that format uh, looks like. So more to come there. Uh, as part of also building Meetup, I've, I've pitched this before, but if you are looking to get involved, uh, we are always looking for more organizers and members to speak to. Um, you'll be the first to see new designs provide direction on new concepts that we're exploring and overall just be really critical to making our platform better. Um, if you're interested in signing up for a session, please fill out that form. We'll also drop the link again in the chat. Um, and uh, one important thing here is that um, you saw the organizer app that uh, Dan presented and, and the demo that Caitlin provided. We're really very much eager to speak to organizers about their mobile habits and how they would like to see uh, the organizer app evolve. Um, and so we're investing a lot more time and would love to talk to as many of you. So um, feel free to continue to use that link uh, in case you're interested in um, providing feedback on the organizer app. Um, 
my regular pitch, we are hiring. Um, another big component of building meetup is um, making sure great people work here. So we have a number of design roles open. Um, so if you know designers, um, please definitely reach out to Dan and myself. Um, we're also hiring, uh, we have multiple data roles, including uh, machine learning and data engineering roles. Um, and so feel free to check out our careers page. Um, and if, again, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to Dan and myself. Um, I think most of you are organizers, but if you are not, uh, consider this your uh, uh, sort of sign to maybe uh, become a meetup organizer. Um, you'll get 30% off of your first subscription payment um, if you go to meetupsavings.com. Uh, and lastly, uh, just a pitch for Pro. I think some of you have asked um, about Pro. Um, there's a excellent uh, sort of page that explains all the benefits of Pro, um, but you can also, if you are interested in trying it out, we're offering a free month trial. Um, so uh, we'll drop the link, this link in the chat as well, um, and uh, feel free to check out some more information there. And as always, uh, a good plug for our podcast, uh, Keep Connected. Uh, it's hosted by our CEO, David Siegel. Uh, and David talks a lot about community, building relationships, and some of his own insights and learnings from building Meetup. And he brings on some really awesome guests um, on, on each episode. So check it out. Uh, you can subscribe at that using that QR code or going to meetuppodcast.com. And uh, I think this is where we can stop presenting. Yeah. But if you do have uh, feedback, I think there was a question in the Q&A about how to share feedback with us. Product feedback at meetup.com goes straight to Dan and myself. Um, and it's something that we review pretty regularly as we're monitoring um, feedback from our organizers and our members. So if you have feedback, um, please send it to us there. Uh, we do check this. We may not reply to everything, but uh, uh, it is good for uh, specific feature requests. If you need support, I highly recommend uh, contacting our support team um, and we'll drop the, the link to the feedback form where you can contact support for more urgent needs. Um, and as always, thank you for joining us today and we're super grateful to have this opportunity to share our progress with you. So I'm not because this is all here. We can always put up, if you need more info, uh, ask, we can repost things, but I'm stopping sharing so that hopefully we're stealing less of your screen real estate. I'm unsure. The thought of me being bigger on your screen is terrifying. So I'm not going to say that part. <laughs> um, let me go through some of the questions. Just give me a second. I've been answering some by typing where it's like a super quick thing, but I'm just going back to the top. So I don't miss those who asked um, first. I typically forget. Um, oh, just a quick, I can type this too, but Eugene, you asked a really great question. Um, is there, can we add a spot for people to give their, uh, LinkedIn link as opposed to like a Flickr link. Yeah, actually that that's on our radar and it's probably something we could do sooner. I'll, I'll re-raise it with the team. That's a great suggestion. So thank you. I really, really appreciate it. Yeah. Oh, um, go ahead. I was going to say Maxwell right below that just had asked, will the shift uh, in focus to events um, make it harder or take the focus off sort of developing personality or, or, or our groups, uh, our communities? I just wanted to emphatically say, uh, no, um, I, I, groups are an incredibly important part of Meetup. Without them, there, there wouldn't be events. Part of the reason why uh, a lot of the time we make it easier for people to find events is for new members, especially. That's one of the ways, the easiest ways for them to find your group or to find a new community is through what the community is actually doing and when they're getting together. Um, but being a part of that group and that community and the stuff, both between the actual events and also just that relationship you have with the people, you know, forever between and during events like that's that is a huge part of meetup too so the quick answer is no i think we're also looking into ways to continue to grow that on meetup the platform and give you more tools to support that community so from a looking for stuff perspective events may be more in your face some of the time but uh from our our interest and our want to make meetup better i think we're certainly evenly weighted if not more sometimes into supporting the community and the group cool um i'll take a couple of questions here uh Benjamin, you asked, as an organizer, I'd love to be able to record attendees on the fly, checking them in and out as they arrive or not. And will the new organizer app allow me to mark people who have RCP as no show, for example? Uh, great question. And this is very, very much uh, one of the features we've been talking about, uh, including in our organizer app. Um, it's 
it's not slated in for the first sort of release, but it is definitely something that uh, we plan on featuring heavily into the organizer app, uh, especially as we sort of uh, include more folks into, um, as, as we release the app to, to more folks. So um, great suggestion, very much on our radar. It just moved. I had a good question at the top while I'm scrolling back. Here we go. Um, there was a couple people who gave us feedback in here on search, like not being able to find what they, they need. I would say there's a couple of things. One, search is always something that we're, we have a great team working on it. So if you actually have specific examples that support customer support link we just put in, I would really appreciate it if you can tell them what, what's happening that doesn't quite seem right or feel right, because then we can continue to fix it. We're working on that pretty much constantly. But uh, specific information or places where it didn't do what you expected are really useful um, and really do help the team understand if there's a, a, a problem or it's something with the data. So any of that, please, please do send along our way. Um, right below, it was a question of how do you determine what bugs to fix or not fix? Um, I just think that's always a really great question. And it's something that um, takes up a lot of Perna, the team's, my brain power sometimes, um, our amazing customer support team. The, the quick answer is it's some sort of calculus between or other math equation between um, how often it's happening and how bad the effects are of a bug, to be totally honest. We strive to fix all of them. We strive to build things that have fewer and fewer of them. And we have processes in place to help continue to make it so when we build stuff, we have fewer things that don't go as planned. When we find them, um, sometimes it takes a few people reporting it for us to understand what's happening. Once we know what's happening, the prioritization is usually relatively easy and it, not easy as in painless, but easy as in we sit down and figure out, all right, who is this affecting? How often is it affecting them? And how bad is that effect? And then we try to fix the ones that have the largest impact overall first. Um, it's not a perfect science. Um, and I'm sure we, we make mistakes in it, but that's generally what we do. Um, there are certain ones where we, you know, that how much it impacts people is very subjective often. And what we try to do is make sure that the things we find critical on Meetup, uh, like making sure groups are able to effectively organize events and meet and that they are effectively able to communicate with each other tend to rise up that you know new members can find groups that they should belong to those are all core functions that that we you know will prioritize over and over again um you know something like an accessibility issue we will try to prioritize because that's something that we want to continue to get better at but in general it's looking at that 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 impact um and then you know ranking from there we're we're not infinitely large so we don't get to everything instantaneously but we try to address all of it over time I hope that wasn't too detailed, but we talk about it a lot. Um, there's a question about hybrid events and uh, in terms of, uh, I think the question, it's not a question, but I'll make it a question is what are we doing with hybrid events? Um, we, if you all remember, we did discuss this in our last product road roadmap update. Um, what we decided to prioritize for this quarter was the, the Zoom integration um, and making sure that you can get Zoom really easily on your online events. Um, hybrid events is very much on our radar and something that we are hoping uh, to get to and, and, and is part of our roadmap uh, probably for some time next year. Um, so it, it's very much on our radar, but we wanted to make sure that at least um, of the options you have currently available, that, that you have uh, the most utility from them. Um, there's, I think, I, I don't know if it's the same in on Cindy, I never know, but there's just, I wanted to address it out loud. There's a question about like, uh, uneven, or I think non-enforcement of a pornography policy. I just want to say we have a really great trust and safety team. There, there should be a easy way to report like on the pages, you see the content. If there isn't absolutely write the support address and tell them, um, is a pretty mighty trust and safety team, but, uh, I'm sure that something could get missed. And if it has been missed, if you would point it out, we'd be incredibly grateful. Um, our enforcement is pretty uh, is pretty swift and strict. They're, they're like I said, there's a good team trained to do this. So please, if you see something pointed out to us, um, we really would appreciate it. But they are constantly monitoring what's going on in Meetup to help uh, stop anything that is both against our policy, but in general would hurt somebody. Oh, I just want to answer. Peter asked, "What are topics um, on Meetup?" There is because Perno was talking about how we're making it. Um, we have worked on topics to make it easier for people to express what they're interested in and for groups to express what they are focused on and then to try to help those people come together. Um, when you were on Meetup, there's a thing we will refer to often as like, 
I think people see them as like a category like arts and culture. And then underneath that, there's all these different things that we do, um, like art galleries, right? That would be a topic. So when you are on Meetup, you can select interests that you have and those are mapped directly to topics. And if you're hosting something, um, now, if you're hosting an event, you can say what topics, or you will be able to say which topics associate with that event. And when you have a group, you can say what topics your group focuses on. And that really is one of the larger signals we take to make sure that people are able to find what they're looking for. Thank you for all these questions, but these are yeah, fantastic. Lots of great questions. Uh, oh, go ahead. I don't. Um, I don't know how to say. I'm going to probably mispronounce your name. It's, it's Shella Roberts. I'm not really sure. Um, but you asked a great question about some folks don't monitor Meetup as much, so you want to be able to email certain attendees. Um, you can do that in the contact members tool. You can just select any people to to email through the contact members tool. You don't need to be on Pro to do that. Um, there's more tools for how you reach out to uh, your folks in Pro. But for that, you should be able to do that directly from the product. If you need, I will try to find a help link for you. Um, but there is, you can do that directly from the, on your group, you can go to contact members in the drop down, and you should be able to do it from there. Uh, TR from Chicago asks, will you keep the option to draft and edit drafts? I'm assuming this is for the uh, organizer app and yes. Um, you will be able to uh, access your drafts uh, that you've created, whether they were on the apps or on the web, um, and be able to access them from the organizer app and also edit uh, any uh, current events, any upcoming events and drafts and, and set them live. So um, we're, you, we're planning on making the organizer app um, sort of full functionality um, to both manage your event and groups. Uh, I just saw Bo's response, but I'll respond yeah. to that too. Um, Thank you. Estimated timing. Um, we are currently working on the sort of the first version and, and opening it up to a small group of organizers, which is why um, if anyone is interested in getting on our uh, organizer list, we'll be, um, please sign up using that link. Um, and our expectation is that it'll hopefully hit, hit the app store probably um, early next year, I believe. Um, and we're going to be continuing to serve, uh, release more features along the way. So uh, closed, serve a closed beta uh, for Q4 and, and more widely available uh, starting early next year. I just posted the feedback sign up link. I don't know if I posted it before, but if I haven't, it's at the bottom of the chat right now. Um, if you sign up there, we'll, we'll, you'll be on our list of folks to contact when we need uh, people to test things and get feedback on. Um, Bo asked, will it be available on the web? Bo, if you tell me below what, which thing, I didn't know when it happened in the presentation. Um, oh, that was what you just were talking about? Or is that something different? I'm kind of getting the thread, but anyway, please let us know. Um, There's just a question, how you announce your event. Uh, if you have an event that's been created, when you create an event, it asks you if you want to announce it. And if you've already created it and didn't announce it, it should be when you go to the event page, it will tell you you can announce it from there. Um, I think there's other explicit ways, but that's the quickest answer to that. Um, we have a good, I actually, I, I use it a lot to remember for pieces. If you go to help.meetup.com in general, um, and you were to type like announce or any other keyword, you'll probably get some articles on exactly how to announce your events. Um, I'll post a link for this one, but it's, it's the knowledge base is pretty handy if you're, if you're searching. Mike, you asked a question, is creating shared events across multiple groups on the roadmap? Um, so this is actually a feature that is currently available to our pro customers. Um, we've talked about this, it's called network events. Um, it allows you to essentially create one event and then publish it to all of the groups that are in that network. So um, definitely check out pro uh, if that's something that is uh, really important to you and, and you'd like to um, have access to it.
Um, I've never noticed this before, but in Zoom, the reason I keep looking back when I when uh, we answer a question, the whole thing moves. So I just lost my spot. I apologize for the long pause. Um, let's do a couple more and then to be respectful of time, I'll make sure we put up the slide with our contact again before we go. Um, Peter had said, uh, you had a comment about being able to see um, sort of somebody's history and if you were able to like mouse over there to get their, uh, their history. Uh, to be honest, I don't, um, uh, I didn't know that was a thing that was, that existed or was explicitly removed. I really appreciate the heads up. I will go do some more work and look at that. In general, if you're an organizer and there's like information you need to run your group every day or that you find really useful to, to understand what's happening, please, this is really useful, but don't, you don't have to wait for this. That product feedback email is perfect for it. Um, let us let us know so we can have someone start to look into it. And as we're designing new things on the product, it's likely we're already looking at a place where that might be, we could deliver that to you sooner. So it's great because we can get it into our thoughts and into our plans. Um, so feel free to suggest that stuff. That's great. Sometimes it's a very small lift. Sometimes it's big, but I, I'd rather know. Um, and in case for folks who don't, Meetup is almost 20 years old. Um, I've been using it for like a little more than 10. Perna has been using it just about the same. She's been organizing much longer than me, but even with that much experience and working here, there are facets of the platform that I might not have touched as a customer and maybe not even working here. Um, that's why it's interesting to work at a company with a lot of history, but we really appreciate other organizers telling us, hey, this is the thing that you have that's really useful or a thing you have that doesn't work the way I expect it. So please, uh, these are great times to do it, but also anytime, feel free to email. Perny, you want to grab one more? And yeah, then I'll get I'm, I'm looking. I'm actually again. also like responding. Um, I know, me too. Um, um, Zoom improvements, yeah. Thank you for saying that. Um, Zoom improvements, I hope Google Meet improvements too. Uh, what else is there for online events? Uh, David asked a question just for online events. Can you include the online link in the calendar entry? So it's it's something we've actually, we've talked a lot about this. There's a little bit of a tricky piece here. Um, but the quick answer is we could include it. There's a problem though, which is I, we've noticed a lot of people that information changes uh, up until the event sometimes. Um, and when you do that, a calendar won't update. So we haven't added it there because we've had sort of equally many problems with it being static. We are looking into better ways to integrate with calendars to make that less of a problem. But at the moment, that's why it's not in the calendar invite. I just want to provide some insight into uh, absolutely have been thinking about that, haven't made the clear determination. It prevents more errors or provides more convenience than the errors it causes. That's why it wasn't there. Um, it doesn't show up on your event page until folks RSVP. So we were trying to help them get there as a single point where the most recent information was. Um, David, I'd love to hear more about why that's a problem for you, your members. I, I get the convenience factor. I Again, I go to a bunch of events, but um, I just wanted you to know we, we have been thinking about that and I will, I will Re, re adjudicate that with Perna and the team. All right, I want to put up that slide that had our information on it before we get out of here. Um, not an idle offer. Perna and I read a lot of email. We, we may not respond to every single one. I can guarantee you we will read it. Um, the product feedback at Meetup goes to us. It's a shared mailbox. We can both see it. Our support team, we can send them stuff if we need help. Um, it is not the best place to go for immediate support questions because we don't check it constantly. We have a support team who's amazing and does check that support link all the time. So if you have an immediate support question, go to the support link we posted in chat. But if you want to give us feedback, you have ideas, you have questions about why something happened, please write us a product feedback. Um, and thank you all so much for all the time. Thanks everyone.